Kepler-10b orbits one of the 150,000 stars that the spacecraft is monitoring between the constellations of Cygnus and Lyra. We aim our mosaic of 42 detectors there under the swan's wing, just above the plane of the Milky Way galaxy. The star itself is very similar to our own Sun in temperature, mass, and size, but older, with an age of 11.9 billion years, compared to the 4.5 billion years of our own Sun. It's a quiet star, slowly spinning, with a weak magnetic field, and few of the sunspots that characterize our own Sun. The star is about 560 light years from our solar system and one of the brighter stars that Kepler's monitoring. It was the first we identified as potentially harboring a very small transiting planet. The transits of the planet were first seen in July of 2009. 560 light years. It occurred to me that when the light from this star began its journey toward Earth, European navigators were crossing the Atlantic Ocean for the first time in search of new horizons. Today we're still exploring, and our crow's nest is a space telescope called Kepler. One day, the oceans we cross will be the galaxy itself. But for now, we imagine the worlds we discover by putting all that we've learned from our observations and analyses into the fingers of artists. Here you see Kepler-10b as a scorched world, orbiting at a distance that's more than 20 times closer to its star than Mercury is to our own Sun. The daytime temperature is expected to be more than 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, hotter than lava flows here on Earth. Intense radiation from the star has kept the planet from holding on to an atmosphere, but here we see flecks of silicates and iron that have boiled off a molten surface and are swept away by the stellar radiation, much like a comet's tail when its orbit brings it close to the sun. Many years ago, before Kepler, our team built a robotic telescope at Lick Observatory to learn to do transit photometry. We called it the Vulcan Telescope, named after the hypothetical planet that scientists in the 1800s thought might exist between the Sun and Mercury. A planet that might explain the small deviations in Mercury's orbit that were later explained with Einstein's theory of general relativity. Vulcan is the god of fire in Roman mythology, a name befitting of a world so close to the Sun. When I saw the artist's rendering of Kepler-10b for the first time, the thought that immediately came to my mind was that this is our planet Vulcan. We'd come full circle in our quest, and we know that we've only begun to imagine the possibilities. NASA's Kepler mission has made the first detection of a planet orbiting two stars. About 200 light years away from our solar system, the planet Kepler 16b orbits two of the 150,000 stars that the spacecraft is monitoring between the constellations of Cygnus and Lyra. Kepler detected the planet directly through what is known as a planetary transit an event where the brightness of a star dims as a result of a planet crossing in front of it. Planets orbiting double stars have been a favorite of science fiction writers for a long time, the most famous of which is from the 1977 movie Star Wars, which showed a double sunset viewed from the fictional planet of Tatooine. Until now, astronomers did not know if such planetary systems could actually exist. Because of Kepler-16, Astronomers have confirmed that the double sunset seen by Luke Skywalker is possible. The planet Kepler 16b is cold, gaseous, and about the size of Saturn. Its stars are both smaller than the Sun and about two billion years younger than our solar system. They orbit around each other, so from our vantage point, they take turns eclipsing each other about every 41 days. The planet Kepler-16b orbits around both stars every 229 days. It is outside of the habitable zone of the stars, which is the region where temperatures are right for liquid water to exist on the surface of the planet. Since it is made of gas, Kepler-16b may not harbor life. But there is evidence that rocky planets with double sunsets are common in our galaxy. press conference held at NASA Ames Research Center, 
The Kepler team announced the discovery of its first confirmed planet in the habitable zone, or the region around a star where liquid water could exist on a planet's surface. Named Kepler 22b, the planet is about 2.4 times the radius of the Earth and orbits a sun-like star about 600 light years away between the constellations of Cygnus and Lyra. Well, certainly the thing that's most exciting to me is the fact that we have finally, after looking at all these candidates, spending all this effort, that we could confirm a planet in a habitable zone that's nearly Earth's size. So we're moving toward the goal of the mission. Are Earth's frequent or are they rare? And this is a major step in that direction. Scientists don't know yet if Kepler 22b has a predominantly rocky, gaseous, or liquid composition, but its discovery is a step closer to finding Earth-like planets. The team has also discovered more than 1,000 new planet candidates, nearly doubling its previously known count. The Kepler team announced today 1,094 new planet candidates, bringing the total roster up to 2,326. Of those, 207 are Earth size, and we now have 48 that are in the habitable zone, uh, 10 of which are smaller than two Earth radii. So these are planets that could potentially be rocky. So it's exci an exciting milestone because we are really honing in on, on truly Earth-sized habitable planets. The announcement helped to kick off the beginning of the first ever Kepler Science Conference. Held at NASA Ames, the meeting provided an opportunity for a large and diverse group of scientists to convene and review insights they've discovered from the Kepler data. Just days earlier, the Kepler mission celebrated 1,000 days of conducting science operations in space. To honor the occasion, scientists and staff members held a reception featuring a cake cutting and stories about the last two and a half years of data collection. Famed astrophysicist and science communicator Neil deGrasse Tyson also came to the event to help the team celebrate the milestone. It's great to see the energy and enthusiasm of the workforce for Kepler matching the magnitude of the science that's coming out from the telescope itself. The public hardly ever sees the workforce behind a mission. They just see the results and they know there's a telescope out there, but they're hard-working people, you know, the engineers and scientists and managers, and, and so it's great to see everybody here together celebrating. Kepler is NASA's three-and-a-half-year mission to search for Earth-sized, potentially habitable planets in our galaxy. NASA's Kepler mission has confirmed the discovery of the first Earth-sized planets outside our solar system orbiting a sun-like star. Located about a thousand light-years from Earth, the Kepler-20 solar system has five planets orbiting a star similar to the Sun. Kepler-20f, the fourth planet in the system, orbits its star every 19.6 days and has a surface temperature of 800 degrees Fahrenheit Kepler-20e has an orbital period of 6.1 days and has a surface temperature of 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. It is about 90% the size of Earth. Kepler-20f is slightly larger than Earth, with a radius that is 3% larger. The extreme temperatures and proximity to their host star means that the planets are not in the habitable zone, the region where liquid water could exist on the surface. These discoveries are a validation of the complex data analysis process that the Kepler team is using to detect transits of Earth-sized planets in front of their stars. Scientists hope to eventually find Earth-sized habitable planets with liquid water that could sustain life as we know it. Kepler is on a three-and-a-half-year mission to search for Earth-sized planets in our galaxy.